Hi everyone, my name is Chan Jun Wei. We are from Group Mechanical 38. Our final year project is entitled with Hybrid Solar Dehydrator and supervised by T.S. Abdullah bin Wagiman. I'm the leader for this group and my fellow members are Imin Chi and Martin Ling Tak Seng. In this video, we will be covering three chapters, which are Chapter 1, Introduction, Chapter 2, Literature Review, and Chapter 3, Methodology. Now, let's begin with the first subtopic of our Chapter 1, Background Problem. We know that the domestic energy consumption nowadays is way more higher than supply due to the rapid development of society. The rapid depletion of non-renewable resources indirectly led to its relative skyrocketed cost. These issues had drawn the world attention in discovering other renewable resources as an alternative for non-renewable resources. Eventually, sun's power had come to people's attention. When it comes to sun's power, we can associate it with drying. Drying is one of the oldest applications of solar energy that make use of solar radiation for food preservation. This further helps in reducing the weight of the product, cut down the storage space of the product also increase the shelf life of the product where it can be stored for a longer time. Obviously, the increasing work populations will tend to increase the food demand and directly leads to the rising of global food waste. Waste that caused by a poor planning in food storing can be categorized as an avoidable waste. Solar dehydrator seems to be an ideal solution to tackle this kind of waste. Solar dehydrator can be categorized into two major groups which are active and passive while the heat transfer mode can be categorized into four, which are direct, indirect, hybrid, and mixed mode. Malaysia seems to be suitable to promote the usage of solar dehydrator. Being a country located at equatorial regions with the daily temperatures of 26 to 28 degrees C, these favorable geographical positions enable Malaysia to receive an abundant amount of sun radiation. Averagely, Central Peninsula Malaysia will receive six hours of sunshine per day. Hello, my name is Martin. I would like to share some problems with the designs of other researchers that need to be improved. The first one is the design from Gujarat Technological University in India. The solar dehydrator is fabricated by using unsuitable testing material which is wood because it is cheaper. But wood is not suitable for the solar dehydrator because wood is not resistant to dampness and mine rot. To solve the problem, we suggest using aluminum plate to replace the wood at as it is more durable and not susceptible to the insect damage. This is the design from Amateur. This solar dehydrator is designed with a chimney to allow the heated gases from flowing out. But this might bring to the hygiene issues as we know that the air surroundings consist of many impurities, but the chimney design didn't cover which might cause the impurities to flow into the chamber. To solve the problem, we suggest enclosing the chimney without affecting the air circulation. The last design is from Kafrisham University. This design promotes solar wind ventilation to enhance air circulation, but we think that it is not suitable to be used in our country due to its unstable wind flow. Other than that, it also takes up a lot of space. So, we suggest installing a DC blower fan using solar energy to replace the suction fan operated by wind energy for a constant air flow rate. Hi and good day, my name is Iminji and I'm going to present about objective, scope and expected result. There are three objectives stated in our project. The first one is to identify the user requirement of fabrics towards household dehydrator. The second one is to design a simple household hybrid solar dehydrator. The third one is to produce the model of hybrid solar dehydrator. Besides, there are many scopes in our project, which is to conduct a questionnaire, to model the design of hybrid solar dehydrator using SOLIDWORKS, to provide 2D and 3D drawing, to simulate assembly of parts, to simulate the lot test, to simulate the motion simulation, to fabricate prototype model, to conduct a functional test, and to test the parameters. For the part expected result, this project will design, develop, and fabricate a well-functioned hybrid food dehydrator by utilizing the solar energy. Besides, it is also used the solar panel to generate electricity. The expected time taken for the food to be dried will be ranging from 6 to 16 hours. The body of the dehydrator will be bulky as the installation of the heat collector requires a large space to absorb the sun heat. Now I would like to explain a little bit about the four types of system for solar dehydrators. First of all is the direct type. As its name shows, this type of dehydrator will expose the products directly to the sun. During the drying process, the product will be placed on a black surface that acts as a good heat absorber in a transparent enclosed container and the product can be dried either by absorbing the solar heat itself or by the heat air or both. Next is the indirect tap. 
indirect solar dehydrator. This type of dehydrator consists of a drying chamber that hides the product from being directly exposed to the sunlight. To dry the product, a solar collector is installed at the side of the drying chamber to collect it and heat the air and pass it to the drying chamber to remove the moisture in it and bring the moisture out together through the chimney above. The third type is a mist mode solar dehydrator that is a passive system and the combination of the above two types of dehydrators. The solar heat is absorbed by the inside black pan the collector and heats the air in the collector. So the dehydration process is carried out by both directing solar radiation on the product and also the heat air at the same time. This is the hybrid type of solar dehydrator. In this solar dehydrator, there are other technologies used other than the solar heat. The dehydrator is made up of a solar collector and a heat exchanger that can store heat energy in a drying chamber. In the daytime, it functions as the dehydrator above but at the same time, it collects heat energy as a backup in heat energy that can be used after sunshine hours. This kind of dehydrator can, be pro can produce a better quality product in a shorter drying time compared to the traditional drying method. Now I will present about the pros and cons for each type of solar dehydrator. For direct type solar dehydrator, its pros are simple and cheap. It can avoid the product from being contaminated by dirt, dust, bacteria and damaged by animals. And it is also offer protection from rains, dews and debris because of the presence of the enclosure. In the flip side, time requires is long. The quality of the product is poor due to the direct solar radiation on the product. And the drying efficiency is always different in every situation because it is depends on the climatic conditions. Next, for indirect type solar dehydrator, it has higher drying rate, lower moisture content, and better quality product compared with the direct type solar dehydrator. Besides, the product is protected from direct solar radiation and it can also prevent the product from being contaminated by dust, dirt, bacteria, and damaged by animals. But this type of solar dehydrator is more complex and expensive. The initial cost is high and maintenance is required. For the mixed mode solar dehydrator, it is more efficient and less time is required. It can also prevent the product from being contaminated by dirt, dust, bacteria and damaged by animals. The product is also protected and less damage is caused by the temperature extremes. But it is more complex and expensive compared with the two types of the solar dehydrator stated before and the capital cost is high and the maintenance is required the quality of the product is poor than the indirect type solar dehydrator due to the direct solar radiation for hybrid solar dehydrator the time required is the least the product quality, color, texture and appearance is the greatest and the product is protected from the direct solar radiation but on the other hand, it is also the most complex and expensive. The initial cost and the capital cost is high and the maintenance also requires for a certain period. There are several equations that are being applied in the calculation process of our project. This may help us in purchasing the ideal DC blower fan, heating elements, solar panel, solar charge controller and SLA battery. We're going to start with the first equation, which is electrical energy consumption. The electrical energy consumption of a load can be calculated via these equations, which is E equals to VIT. The unit should be in watt hour. Next, it's about the power rating of a load. The power rating of a load can be calculated via these equations, which is P equals to VI. The unit should be in watt. The third equation is about the effective power rating of solar panel. Since the heat absorbed by the solar panel will lost via cable and wire, therefore the final efficiency is given as 80%. Hence, we will have PFSP which is effective power rating of solar panel equals to 0.8 times p naught sp where p naught sp is the power rating of solar panel and the unit will be in watt the fourth equation is going to be solar panel sun radiation harvest rate since the solar radiation per day is not constant at all therefore we can estimate the time for fully receiving solar radiation is in four hours therefore we have these equations efsp equals to PFSP times 4 hours and the unit is in watt hour where EFSP is a final electricity energy generated by solar panel the fifth equation is solar charge controller current rate it can calculate it via ISCC equals to PFSP over VB 
where VB is the voltage of SLA battery. The last two equations that we are going to apply is the drying rate and moisture loss. For drying rate, the equation is derived as M0 minus MF over T, and the unit is in kilogram per hour, where M0 is the initial product weight, MF is the final product weight after the drying process, and T is the time in hour. For moisture loss, the equation is given as M0 minus MF over M0 times 100%, where the answer will be in percentage. Now, I would like to explain the engineering design process of our project. After the study, we can conclude that the evaluation and generation of the design concepts were produced according to the consideration and criterion elements as follows, such as electrical supply system, size, ease of use, mobility of the products, and also the cost and fabrication methods. Then, I would like to discuss the design flow chart of our project. After starts, the first step is to identify the problem in the market and determine the user requirements. After that, we can sketch some designs that might overcome the requirements and select a final design as our project. Then we start to model and fabricate it. After finishing, we need to test the model to make sure that it can function well. If not, we need to remodel and refabricate again. In order to collect user requirement towards our household dehydrator, a survey was conducted where a questionnaire form was created via Google Form. The shortened URL of this questionnaire form was shared to our friends families and public randomly to be filled up. The survey conductor is helpful in providing ideas for the product design process. The product description was attached to this survey form to explain the initial concept of our product. The questionnaire form consists of eight questions and the results obtained were interpreted as follows. The first questions that we asked to our respondents is about the overall reactions to the described product. Luckily, majority of our respondents thinks that the described product is excellent or good. The second question that we asked is about how interested would the respondents be in using the described products. Obviously, we can see that majority of our respondents are very interested or interested in using the described product. The third question we asked is about the frequency of usage of this product. Majority of our respondents tend to use the product two to three times a month, while 17 respondents tend to use this product once a week, 10 respondents tend to use this product once a month, and two respondents tend to use this product two to three times a year. Thus, we can conclude that the frequency of use for this product will be relatively high. The fourth question that we're asking about is how interested are the respondents in buying this product? Luckily, majority of our respondents are very interested or interested in buying this product. Only 8 respondents uh, remain neutral. The fifth question that we asked is about the range of price that our respondents could accept. Majority of our respondents could accept a range of 200 ringgit to 249 ringgit, and 18 respondents could accept 250 ringgit to 299 ringgit. Only 3 people could accept 300 ringgit to 249 ringgit, and another 3 people could accept 350 ringgit to 400 ringgit. Hence, we can conclude that majority of our respondents could accept a range of 200 ringgit to 249 ringgit for the price of this product. The six questions that we are asking about the electrical supply system for blower. Majority of our respondents prefer to use a solar panel to produce electricity and supply the electricity for blower rather than fully rely on power supply. The seven questions we are asking about drying chamber size that our respondents prefer. Majority of our respondents prefer a small size drying chamber. The last questions and the eight questions we are asking about the applications of caster wheels. Majority of our respondents think that we should apply a caster wheels to make this product movable. While only four respondents think that there's no need to add caster wheels in this product. Now I would like to explain the concept generation. Concept generation is a step that starts with the needs of the specific customers and the target specifications and then produce various types of concept designs or solutions and finally decides a final design among them. As you can see from the slide, there are four types of sketching ideas. From the first sketch, this is the tallest one among the designs which cost that its solar collector is also the longest one, which means that it needs the longest and highest cost of solar panel. For the second sketch, its design is much smaller than the first sketch. The angle and of the solar collector for the second sketch is just 45 degrees, which is smaller than the first sketch and also shorter than it. For the third sketch, although its solar collector is 0 degree and makes it become smaller, but it does not consist of a boiler and wells, which makes it become difficult to move and also poor ventilation indeed. The last sketch consists of the many advantages of the above design such as plain solar collector which can absorb more solar energy with wells for ease 
easy to move, and also the fan which improves the ventilation inside the dehydrator. Now I will present about the concept evaluation. Concept evaluation is a form of analysis and a complex decision-making process involving many criteria. In the initial state of the product development, concept evaluation is very important because it will affect the success of the product. So we had drawn four designs for this hybrid solar dehydrator. So the first design is at the upper left corner where the angle of the solar collector is 55 degrees to the horizontal and the height of the leg is high and it is with wheels and with a blower. The second design is at the upper right corner where the angle of the solar collector is 45 degrees to the cabinet. It has smaller cabinet with wheels and with a fan at the side of the cabinet. The third design is shown at the bottom left corner where the angle of the solar collector is 0 degree from the cabinet. It is without wheels and without blower or fan. The last design is at the bottom right corner where the angle of the solar collector box is 0 to the cabinet. It contains wheels and a fan on the top of the cabinet. After that, we use the decision matrix table to choose a design with the highest rating. So there are 7 criteria listed in the table and each of them has its weighting rates based on the user requirement in the survey. So each of the rating is evaluated with the score from 0 to 5, where 0 is the lowest and 5 is the highest. The score for each option in criteria is calculated by multiplying the evaluation score and the weighting rate of the criteria. After that, the total score is scanned by adding all the score for each option. So based on the decision matrix table, option 4 received the highest total score and it was approved for the further design process. So that's all from me. Thank you.